welcome. Normally when I do drama, I try to do them in the drama mama format, which is where we go through, we look at all the receipts, and then we come to a decision at the end. I can't do that today. And there's a couple of reasons why, okay? There's a couple of reasons why I can't really do that in this style today. First of all is because I, I think this is a pretty cut and dry situation. And I'm going to show you why I think it's a pretty cut and dry situation, okay? I don't think there's much actual drama to investigate here. I'm just telling you what I think, okay? And secondly, because Xander Hall is my colleague and my friend, okay? I do consider Xander Hall a friend. And, uh, and I like Xander Hall. And I think Xander Hall is a pretty fucking good guy. And uh, because of that, some people will say that this is very biased. And of course, there is always a bias towards people that you care about and towards people that you consider your friend. But that doesn't mean that everything that you say about that friend is like tainted or biased completely. And I think that the evidence and the, 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 the images that we're going to go through today is going to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. Now, some of you might know that I actually have a little bit of a history of defending Xander Hall. And by that, I mean that like almost two years ago, I did a stream where I, uh, where I reacted to a pretty vicious call out post of Xander Hall by a small content creator who I don't even know if they make content anymore. Um, and the reason why even though I disagreed with a lot of what Xander Hall said in that particular incident, incident, I thought the the treatment that Xander Hall was getting was horrible and unfair. And I think that that um, frankly, some people on the internet right now uh, go after Xander Hall uh, with what I can only say is a level of like weird, uh, alienated internet parasocial um attachment that really makes me weirded out okay it makes me uncomfortable not just as a friend of zan but also just as a denizen of the internet in general like we all have to spend a lot of time on here right now because that's like where shit happens in the middle of a pandemic you know it's how you talk to people and i don't know like i find it kind of disgusting the amount of people who just think that it's okay to repeat made up bullshit about a real person on the web, even if you think their takes are bad. Now, I think there are some limits to this. Obviously, I'm not going to cry if somebody says something mildly incorrect about uh, Rush Limbaugh or fucking Donald Trump or whatever. But Xander Hall is not fucking Rush Limbaugh or Donald Trump. Xander Hall is a, uh, a, a, young, a young, successful content creator who has d demonstrated in the past uh, open a willingness to be very reasonable with other people and also who is being accused wrongfully in this fucking situation. Like, really, really bad, okay? Yeah, Rush Limbaugh is fucking dead. Some people see him as an easy target because he, he has privilege in their eyes, but that's ridiculous. That's the thing that annoys me. People make up a fictional version of whoever they're critiquing and don't actually uh, take the time to get to the bottom of it. The funny thing is that none of that actually pertains to what's going on today. Because what's going on today, like I said, is one of the dumbest dramas I've and most clear-cut dramas I've ever encountered. And it actually blows my mind that it has come back up again this, like, this far away. Okay? Like, the fact that there are people that I woke up after my stream on Wednesday to the to this corner of the internet being full of people rehashing z sex cult allegations? Ah! You go, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a second. Sex cult allegations? Yes. That is what this is all about. This entire drama, which I've been sort of vaguely pointing at and talking about the people involved, this entire drama is about a sussy little baka who accused another person of having a sex cult. Now, 
Many of us go, wow, sex cult? That sounds a little hot. Tell me more. Fair. Fair. Okay? Fair. I get it. I understand. I get it. You know? Other people might be going, boy, oh boy, a sex cult seems like a huge allegation to be making in 2022. Uh, a year after, what, two other major sex cults that involved, uh, like, financially binding the members of the cult uh, that involved marking them permanently via tattoos and branding and financially tying them to the cult. Boy, didn't wasn't that like wasn't that a huge thing on the minds of people in 2021 and 2020? Doesn't it seem a bit weird to to levy accusations of that gravity against a young YouTube creator? And the answer is yes, that's fucking weird. That's fucking really 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 fucking weird, okay? That's a very weird fucking thing to do. No, 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 guys, don't get me wrong. Tattoos and branding is really, really hot, okay? But uh, abusive sex cults where they tie you in financially and then make you get branded and swear, uh, swear allegiance to the sex cult owner and also, you know, sign over your life insurance to them, that's, like, really bad. That's also a huge allegation. A sex cult is a just is a way that we describe in a type of abusive cult uh, uh abusive structure that takes advantage of people's emotions that takes advantage of people's vulnerability and force and puts them in a social position where they basically have no choice but to fuck the owners of the cult Yeah, that's a funny thing, Miss Rothy. D Demon Mama has multiple partners literally living with me, but Zan is the one who's accused of a sex cult. You want to be? You want to know what's really funny? The, when I saw this come back up, I slammed my bed. I went, "Fuck!" Every single fucking time, this motherfucker stealing my valor. Me, I have fucking two pets who bring me drinks, and nobody says I have a sex cult. But Xander Hall, Xander Hall has one DM out of context, leaked, and half the internet says he has a sex cult. What the fuck? This is so unjust. This is... Why am I not trending for my sex cult? Why? That makes me angry. But I'm going to calm my anger. Because today, I am not channeling my righteous anger at my lack of reputation for having the sexiest sex cult on the internet. I'm not angry about that putting it aside. Instead, I'm channeling my righteous anger at the fact that somebody who I think has done nothing wrong has been accused of something wrong. That's impossible, Cherry. With all due respect. It's impossible. So, let's talk about it. Let's get into it, okay? Okay? So, we're going to start I've been given a large file of receipts, which we're going to be going through, and we're going to be looking at all of these, and these are vaguely in the sort of correct order of events, okay? And we're going to follow these through, and we're going to talk about the evidence on hand, we're going to talk about why people are like this, and we're going to take, you know, and I'm going to let you know my full opinion, Okay. 120, the day Twitter said no to cry bullies. Yeah, you want to know, actually, before we jump into it, I just want to say, um, I just want to say, I really appreciate the fact that there has been, an, that in 2022, there has been an active pushback to this type of garbage, to the type of the Luna Oi shit, the Thought Slime shit, the fucking uh, uh, Uwu woo Oh, thank you. Please set that over here. I'll, I'll have that in, in just a little bit. Thank you so much. Oh, fucking sandwich. Hell yeah. Thank you, Izzy. You're welcome. Mwah. I love you. I love you too. Thank you. Yes, I got a sandwich. You didn't miss the segment. I was, uh, I self stun locked because I asked the chat if they wanted me to. It's their fault. Don't blame me. Um, uh, same, same mama, but it's sad to see people you respected getting in on it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
No, 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 no. Izzy is uh, Izzy is not in the sex cult. Uh, Izzy is uh, Izzy is uh, Izzy is my wife, basically. <laughs> okay, listen. Let's get things straight. Okay, let's get it all straightened out. Um, yeah, an accomplice. Exactly. My wife. My wife. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. I had no rings, but basically, yes. Uh, I've been with Izzy for seven years now. So Izzy and I have been together for a long time. That's gynotype for those of you, those of you who don't know. I, I, I love, I love gynotype very much. Um, yeah, we've been together a long time. So, um, I, but gynotype is quiet. And so, you know, gynotype mostly keeps to her own. Um, but yeah, anyway, not, none of that is, that is all on a side. What we're talking about here is the sex cult allegations, okay? And uh, and we're going to talk about uh, uh, how this all shook down and why it matters and why it bothered me and a whole bunch of other stuff. But what I have been very happy to see, as I, as I was saying before my sandwich came in, I've been very happy to see pushback to this kind of thing. Um, I think there's a lot of bullshit that happens on the internet. And everybody calls each other all kinds of things all the time right you have everybody calling each other a pedophile all the time you have everybody calling each other this that the other thing everybody's calling everybody everything it just constant it's constant noise especially on twitter especially on streaming platforms everybody's got an accusation against everyone right however um part of the reason that this is the case is because there is a a type of of bandwagoning uh, cliquish, uh, 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 team sports stream of, 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 uh, or, or I would say faction of people on the internet. And I think it's a, I think it's like a personality type that you encounter sometimes that there's some people who will just always go to bat for the people that they think are a part of their faction. Even if members of that faction, um, are misbehaving because in their mind, there's a greater good to be served, Right. Um, and I can understand that. I can understand where that comes from, but we're not talking about siding with your best friend over your rival, uh, in like a, he said versus she said situation, uh, where, you know, your rival is claiming that, uh, that he got, you know, his brother got locked up because your brother snitched on him. And you're like, no, my brother would never snitch. I'm going to stick by my brother. We're not talking about a situation like that. We're not talking about fucking uh, whether or not you trust your, 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 your two, which cousin you trust in, in the family feud. We're not talking about, uh, uh, you know, your partner cheating on you and, and you having trust issues. We're talking about random people on the internet. Okay. People who you barely know. And I get very concerned when I see people uh, drop into harsh factions just because of a perceived, like, factional belonging on the internet. And let's be honest, we've seen a lot of that lately. We've seen a fucking lot of that lately. And there are these little groups on the internet, these little social groups. I, I often refer to them as the uwu left. Uh, uh, some people call... Some people refer... I use I use this term differently. Some people will call them woke scolds. Um, I don't really like that that terminology all that much. I don't really even like using uwu left all that much. But I do think this faction does exist. But it's a group of people who basically constantly engage in uh, I in in, in team extremely tr team based, um, extremely dramatic and also extremely uh uh, charged and identity focused, uh, engagement online. They spend most of their time calling out perceived, uh, racism, perceived discrimination, often while engaging in it themselves. Okay. Often while engaging in the exact same behavior themselves. And I'm not talking about just calling somebody a cracker. I'm talking about people who will, uh, in one sentence condemn, uh, you know, condemn, one a creator for you for call it for being ableist for calling someone an idiot and then in the next sentence they will say uh they will say oh where you know where were you touched on the doll 
where did the where were you touched where did the where did x content creator or x person touch you on the doll so they'll like they'll be super woke selectively when it's against them when it's against somebody they don't like very very hypocritical and there is a large faction of people like this there is a a a, a distinct faction at least about as big as my stream audience maybe a little smaller um this is like the luna oi the thought slime there's like this little group and they always back each other up no matter what and you know what as it turns out that can be really really problematic if you don't take the time to actually vet the people that you're getting your information from because sometimes out of uh the people who want to like side with their team or whatever sometimes a member of that team will give bad information and if you're not capable of acknowledging that then you look like an idiot and thought slime looks like an idiot okay thought slime looks like a big dumb idiot for a long time and is currently being a big dumb muffin headed doo-doo head i'm gonna try and speak the the language of thought slime to the best of my ability okay what you're doing is very mean what you're doing it's just frankly assholeish if you don't want to be an asshole maybe you should consider not doing these things that you're doing muffin it's it's very heckin annoying when when you make an accusation that you don't have evidence for it's really heckin annoying when uh you pick somebody that you don't like and you behave basically like everyone else on the internet while simultaneously pretending that you're the most sensitive person who's ever lived it really heckin gets to me you know i just you know you know what am i i'm just a you know i'm just a sad pathetic white person on the internet i'm just you know what do i know i'm just white i'm very sorry for being white but I hope that you will understand that my whiteness is shouldn't get in the frickin' way of you not being a frickin' frack, of you not being a heckin' hawker, a heckin' a heckin' butthead. My white I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was that was unnecessary. That was that was heckin' rude right there. That was real heckin' rude. Okay? So cracker to cracker, you know? Let's just, uh, let's see if we can maybe, maybe you can understand why the fuck a lot of people are a, 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 a bit frustrated about your, uh, uh, let's say your, uh, your, what's the word? Uh, 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 fuck crustable of, uh, of, a, of an inane tooting on the internet. Okay. A lot of people get annoyed by that. Okay. Let's take a look into it. Let's look at the facts, everybody starts here i don't want to make the world a more hostile place and i'm not living up to my stated values everyone is shitty sometimes but it's important for people with a public public platform like mine to be held accountable i agree thought slime i agree so guess what we're holding you accountable we're holding you heckin accountable buddy we're 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 holding you heckin accountable there's a very specific reason I emphasize that YouTubers should not date their fans, but I did not think we would arrive at the sex cult portion of da of danger quite so quickly. This was tweeted in May on May 27th of or sorry, 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 in May 10th of 2020. 27 quote retweets, 2646 likes, 166 retweets. Damn, that's pretty crazy range. That's a lot of range. A lot of people saw that. On cue, we get the dudes who think we need more dispassionate nuance in the you should run a sex cult discourse. And this one got one quote tweet, 890 likes, and 17 retweets as a follow-up to this one. Okay? Now, you might go, well, what was he referring to? And what Thought Slime was referring to here very directly, though he did not say Xander Hall's name, was a allegation and i say that with quotes that xander hall was involved in a sex cult okay 
and had been involved in the creation of a sex cult. Now, you might go, damn, Zan, what the fuck, bro? But that you would only do that if you take everything that everyone says on the internet with a grain of, with, with, with no grain of salt. You just take it flat, you know? But the question is, where the fuck did this come from? And it's really interesting because it came from basically nowhere. There was a, a, a joke that was made at one point and someone very hostile, I don't remember who the original user was, but someone who was very hostile to Xander Hall took a joke about uh, that a user made towards Xander Hall about a harem, took that joke and reported it as fact. Yet Corviday went full on on this stuff. I don't know why. I don't know why Corviday went so full on on that stuff. Uh, I can only assume it's because of a personal dislike. So it started with a joke about a harem, right? Some user was like, <laughs> ooh, woo, I want to be in your harem, Xander Hall. And then somebody screenshotted that and reported that Xan actually had a harem. And then the internet game of telephone went from harem to sex cult. That's how this all started. And that's where we jump right back into here. Just so you know, Xander Hall replies here, hey, I'm blocked, so I can't see what he's saying about me, but it's probably dumb and misinformed. If you're curious about what happened, I wrote a thread and the other people involved have been correcting misinformation. Hey, Zan, do you have this thread? Can we have that thread? Do you have this thread up or Cherry, do you have this thread? Because I'd love to go over that thread and settle this once and for all. Okay, Lonnie's getting it. Hell yeah, let's get that thing up. Apparently, everyone else the accuser said was involved has apparently debunked it. Xander Hall is talking about making a video on it. Don't just accuse based on a single accusation, maybe. Innocent until proven guilty is a thing. Damn. By the way, really like Kezbox. Alex, he's he's a person who's always been willing to uh, to to be honest in that way. I, I really like Kezbox. I haven't talked to Kez in forever, but Kez, if you hear this, uh, shout outs for being cool and based there. Let's watch the original video that Zan made responding to the claims, okay? It's fair. Xander Hall made a response to the claims of the sex cult. Let's see what Zan lays out as somebody who's been accused now on Twitter. And hey, now we're gonna, and we'll circle back around to why it's relevant now, soon. Xander Hall, really quick before we get into this video, I wanna add a quick mini disclaimer. Um, I realize there's a lot of stuff happening in the world right now, most notably, and most relevantly, I suppose, the um, protests happening across America, um, you know, headed by BLM. And I really want to talk about this. I think it's a really relevant issue that I need to be talking about. I've been very active about it on Twitter, but not so much on my channel. And I've noticed every time I bring up this drama or try to respond to it on Twitter, I get a ton of people in the comments telling me to shut up, forget about the drama, or apologize and move on and mm. talk about something that really matters. There's more important stuff happening. And I really do want to cover these issues. And I agree that there is more important stuff happening when we talk about the grand. You want to know what really sucks? When you're accused of something horrible, and then when you try to defend yourself, you're told that you're distracting from something more important. That's fucked, guys. That's really fucked. It's also extremely cruel to a content creator to tell them to shut the fuck up about the about how they've been falsely accused because there's something else going on like we all know there's always something going on for us to talk about every single fucking content creator on the planet every single youtuber on the planet who's trying to make a living doing this shit knows there's always stuff that we could talk about we're always overwhelmed with all the shit we have to talk about so it's kind of shitty to be like uh yeah 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 keep dancing keep dancing for me keep entertaining me keep giving me the information shut the fuck up about your personal struggles shut the fuck up about the fact that you've been accused wrongfully of something heinous yeah, no, fuck that. I think that content creators have the right to fucking create, first of all, whatever the fuck they want. And secondly, to absolutely respond to hurtful allegations that have been made against them. Fucked.
What a, what a fucking horrible response. Yeah, exactly. Why not tell people making spurious accusations to shut the fuck up and focus on the shit that matters? Well, because, see, even when the accusations were proved as spurious, a lot of people didn't believe they were spurious. Because people, because this type of shit takes advantage of people being well-meaning. People want to protect one another. They don't want to support somebody who does bad things. So when a credible person says something about somebody else, makes an accusation about somebody else, there's a lot of people who just out of a well-intentioned desire to uh, not contribute to bad people will disengage or will believe the story. Spooky Star says, I've noticed that Zan seems to get especially infantilized and is very s fucked. It really gives the vibe of shut up kid the adults are talking when the kid is trying to tell you something wrong, except the kid is an adult. Yeah, it's really rude. Now, I refer to Xander Hall as a young content creator because that's relative to me. Xander Hall has been fucking trucking at this shit and working his ass off really fucking hard to make a name for himself and to make content that's his, that's uniquely his, and he's succeeded at that. He's... He's done really well with that. So I, I don't know. Personally, I think it's kind of an injustice that he wasn't really allowed to respond fairly to these allegations. So let's finish watching the video, huh? I'm st grand scheme of things. But um, this drama has severely impacted my mental health and riddled me with anxiety and stress. And I am not currently capable of streaming or talking about any of these topics in a coherent, uh, uh, responsible manner. And that's why I need to make this video. Uh, so I can get all of this off my chest, um, get this drama behind me, and disprove the allegations towards me. So I can stop being uh, uh, so down in the dumps. So I can get to talking about what's really important. So I really do appreciate you watching this. Please don't comment. You need to be talking about other things. I'll, I'll be talking about... Uh, 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 everything else tomorrow, okay? Um, you know, with the, the riots and all that stuff. We'll, we'll get to it, okay? I just need to get this off of my chest, alright? So, once again, thank you for watching this. I do appreciate it, and let's get into it. Hey guys, it's Xander Hall. Now, I don't usually like talking about drama on my channel. The last time I did something like this was a year ago, when I made a video about someone named Memology101. He was this alt-right YouTuber who made a video about me because I mentioned him during a live stream, and a bunch of his fans, which were Nazis, started brigading my channel and my Discord server, spamming the n-word, and, you know, just kind of filling the comments with toxicity. That video I made a year back seemed to do a good job of clearing things up, so I decided that biting the bullet and making a video about this drama might be a good idea. I wasn't originally going to talk about this outside of streams occasionally since it didn't really deserve that kind of attention, so I decided to set things straight in a Twitter thread. Turns out, that wasn't enough though. An anti-breadtube Twitter has blown it up and signal boosted the drama in an attempt to try and hurt my reputation. Unfortunately, it's- That's another thing that a lot of these uwu lefties don't think and often don't care about. A lot of uh, the the little uwu lefty factions online that love to levy allegations without evidence against other people, um, they love to do this. And every single time they do it to somebody like Zan, all the Nazis get on board to help out. The Nazis jump on board to exploit infighting. And everybody should be aware that that's a risk every single time these things happen. Which is why it's doubly important that if you're going to bring up allegations, they be accurate and truthful and not made up or pulled out of your ass like Mildred has done, like Thought Slime has done. It's kind of working. Every post on our bread tube has at least one post talking about this, and I've even had fucking Thought Slime, a much larger YouTuber than me, claiming I have a sex cult after blocking me. So yeah, it's time to make a video about it. So, before I get into it, I want to make two disclaimers. One, and most important, do not, under any circumstances, harass or seek out anyone involved with this drama. If I find out- There's only one person I'm seeking out, and that's Thought Slime. Because I think Thought Slime was a piece of shit, and so the way that I'm doing that is by making a video about it. The most peaceful way I can go about calling somebody a piece of shit on the internet. 
and I'm doing so with the evidence on hand. So let's get through this. What you did, I will ban you from my community and you will not be welcome back here. Seriously, don't go after anyone involved. Two, please watch this whole video before you form your opinion on this. I'm not the only one who's getting harassed because of this, and I would prefer if everyone at least tried to watch all of it and get all the details and evidence before going on with their day. With all that said, let's get into it. So I guess I'll start by telling you my side of the story. Substantiating my claims with screenshots where it's necessary, and then going into the claims of the accuser and debunking them one at a time. So this all started when the idea of making a not safe for work section of my Discord server got really popular. I wasn't a fan of the idea, but once the demand got too big to ignore, I let my mods make the NSFW chats and set up a system to vet anyone who got access to make sure that they were at least 18 years or older. Most people Smart that move. posted there would talk about sex, post porn memes, and even post nudes if they wanted to. Okay. Some of you might be wondering, Demon Mama, your server, you, you talk about sex a lot, and yet your server doesn't have a not safe for work section. That's correct, and it never will. And the reason for that is because the the logistics of running and verifying and keeping safe a not safe for work sec uh, a not safe for work section of a discord is fucking impossible. So, yes, we will not be ha even though I am very sex positive, we our discord is never going to have a not safe for work segment segment. I'm very sorry. Now, if this sounds yikes, just know that this is common in a lot of Discord servers, and even Vosh has an NSFW section like this, so it's not some groundbreaking, yikesy, scandalous thing. Well, sometime after the creation of this section, I ended up getting really burned out on streaming, and the stress caused me to bite a really bad hole in my lip during my sleep. I decided it would be best to take a few weeks off of streaming to recharge my batteries, since the hole in my lip would take weeks to heal, and it would make it really hard for me to talk and for long periods of time anyway. I spent these few weeks playing a lot of video games and hanging out in the voice chat of my server. Over this period of time, I ended up befriending a few of the women who had posted nudes in the NSFW section of my server and hang out in the VC. I should clarify, none of them were fans of me, but we'll get into that later. Now, some of them are fine being named in this video, while others aren't. So for those who are not okay with being named, I'm just going to call them a random letter. There were four women who I befriended and who ended up getting involved with this drama, and two that I already knew very well. The first one of them was Aisha. She was a big fan of Destiny and stumbled across my talk with him and decided to join my Discord server since she likes being in political discords. She was inactive for a long time and didn't watch my videos, but when the NSFW section was made, she got verified 18 plus and started posting there. Shortly after, we started talking in VC and became friends. Another girl, who we'll just call B, had cabin fever from being... I think we're going to get to that, Delaney. ...stuck yeah. inside from coronavirus, so when she stumbled on my alt-right pipeline video, she joined the server to talk to other people about the pipeline since she thought it was really interesting. She didn't really watch my content, but she did enjoy... Do I have an email? Yes, I do. I'm very slow at responding to it, but I do have an email. ...socializing, and eventually we ran into each other in voice chat and started talking, and shortly after, we became friends. Another, who we'll call M, really liked posting in the NSFW section and would often hang out in voice chat. This is where we met. Now, despite us being friends, she was very critical of my political opinions and the way my community was managed. We're both leftists, don't get me wrong, but we did have a few political disagreements and we certainly debated a few times. Well, that's weird, She Gay definitely Fish. wasn't a fan that. of me, but she was a fun person to talk to and became friends pretty quickly despite our disagreements. Next, there's A. She's a trans woman. I promise that becomes relevant later. Who I've been friends with for a very, very long time. Long before getting into political content. She's about as far from a fan of my content as you could possibly get and is probably one of my most critical friends. She always takes the opportunity to take jabs at me, but that's just our friendship dynamic. There was also my girlfriend of about eight months as of the making of this video. I don't think I need to go into too much detail about that. I guess you could say she's a fan in the sense that she's been dating yeah, her for eight months and she's supportive, but that would be a stretch. Finally, there's the catalyst of all this drama. I'm not even going to bother censoring her name since if you already know about the situation, you know who she is. She's called Spooky. She joined my server a few months before we started talking and posted in the NSFW section <clears throat> a lot after it was made. She also spent a lot of time in voice chat. We'd actually met and talked a bit way before that, but it wasn't until my break that we really started talking and became friends. So we spent a while talking in voice chats about politics and media, getting along, 
But Thank after like a so week, much. we wanted our own place to hang out, separate from the rest Thank of the you. server, since we couldn't have a conversation without one or a dozen of my fans joining and kind of ruining the chill mood. We decided to make a different part of the server that would be private and hang out in there. We decided to call it Xander Hall's Harem, referencing a running joke on my channel that I'm a mini Destiny. For those that aren't aware, the streamer Destiny fucks a lot. In fact, his community likes to joke about how he's the protagonist of a harem anime, in which the main character, usually a guy, is pursued by a bunch of women. That's what the name of the group was facetiously referencing. For clarification, this was not a polyamorous relationship or polycule. It was just an online friend group. We had an NSFW chat to talk in, we casually flirted and even posted nudes, but it was just there for people who felt like horny posting. We spent the vast majority of the time talking about politics and media we enjoy. We were really just a group of friends hanging out. A lot of people have tried to warp this into being some kind of polycule where it's a bunch of girls and one guy and all the girls are attracted to the guy, but it was literally only a harem in name. By the way, fuck, let me just tell you something real quick. I'm going to give you a hot take. You guys ready? You ready for a hot take? Did you know that it's actually totally okay? to be in a relationship with one guy and five women? Did you know there's literally nothing wrong with that? At all? In any way, shape, or form? Did you know that it's okay to participate in a harem if you want to and nobody's forcing you? Did you know that? Wow, imagine that. Huh. Consent is a hell of a drug. Yeah, you can do all kinds of really fun stuff. Damn, how I know there's a whole bunch of you in chat right now or her, or, who are like, oh my god, oh, what I would give to recline in, in my mistress's harem with the other girls, and maybe I'll get picked today, and maybe not. Maybe today I'll just lay in the harem and, and be relaxed and be beautiful, and tomorrow the mistress will choose me to fuck. Oh, hi, Fawn. Hi. Oh, hey, how are you? Mm. Yeah. Good timing, I guess. I know, consensual polycules. I know that what Xan is saying here is that he wasn't in a polycule. You know? Oh, of course the harem can fuck, fuck each other. Of course, of course. Well, it depends uh, on the dynamic. I guess it depends on the dynamic. Right? If you have a slave harem, you don't want to let them fuck each other. You don't want to do that. Come on, guys. Let's, let's not get distracted, okay? What I'm trying to say... What I'm trying to say here is that i know that zan is saying this was not a polycule but even if it was that's all right it's okay yes it is actually yes believe it or not it is okay for a young white cis streamer to have relationships and relationship dynamics that are consensual even if he had a harem that would have been okay Thought Slime is anti poly reactionary and should be stripped of his uwu soft boy title. Okay, Thought Slime is not an uwu soft boy. He just pretends to be one on the internet. And secondly, uh, Thought Slime uh, isn't anti poly, but becomes anti poly by means of being an idiot on the internet. Stolen soft boy valor. Uh, what what he really what you know what what you know who you know who watch you know what you want to know who Thought Slime really is. This is Thought Slime in like a, in like a character. If I could sum up Thought Slime in a character, this is Thought Slime. Hold on, let me just give it. Let me just give you the look right here, so you know exactly who I'm talking about. It's gonna make sense almost instantaneously. Here you go. This is Thought Slime. This is a self portrait of of Thought Slime right here. Okay, Martin Prince ass motherfucker. Oh, Lisa, Lisa, you're being such a hecky. You're not following the rules. I'll tattle on you, Lisa. Not as not an internet uwu soft boy, just Martin Prince pretending on the internet to be an uwu soft boy. Okay? Just saying. In fact, one woman in the group, A, is a trans woman who's also a lesbian. 
She's not attracted to me in any way, and nothing sexual happened between us. She what? was in there because we were friends. It was a glorified group chat. Eventually, we decided to move the harem. I say this very sarcastically since it Wasn't was Wasn't Martin kind of a fucking asshole? Yeah, and so is ThoughtSlime. No means an actual harem into its own server. Aisha was the one who made the new server and was the only one with any power in it. In fact, she gave me a role called Simp and would often change my nickname on the server to whatever she thought was funny, and I didn't have the power to change it. This that's cute, okay? Guys, hot take, that's cute. That's just cute. Some femdom, little bit of playful, non-sexual femdom, cute as fuck. It wasn't a bad thing or anything. I just want to make it very clear that this was not my server. Things went as usual for a while and no drama occurred. I made it very clear that if anyone wanted to join the friend group, we all had to agree <laughs> yeah, on fish. it unanimously. And if anyone did something we didn't like, we would either resolve it or kick them out. This would theoretically include me if I had an issue. It's not like I was the leader of the group or anything. Some of us weren't cool posting in the NSFW section, like B, for example. She was fine browsing the NSFW section, but never posted there, and that was fine with all of us. The server was mostly non-sexual, even if we did often engage in fully consensual horny posting. I won't go into all the details, since it's pretty unnecessary and irrelevant here, but I will have to a little later when we get into the accusations coming from Spooky. Things went on like this for weeks, until one afternoon I woke up to about a million pings on Discord. Apparently Spooky had kind of a mental breakdown during a falling out with the rest of the friend group. From what I was told, and was able to put together from reading chat logs, they were talking about Star Wars with Spooky. Now, Spooky is a big Star Wars fan, and takes it pretty seriously, especially shipping. She's a big time Raylo stan, and while Spooky, Aisha, B, and another mod in my server were talking about Star Wars, the topic of some controversy that happened in the Star Wars fandom came up. Apparently, the actor who plays Finn in the new Star Wars movies made some pretty misogynistic comments about Rey, the character. From what I understand, a ton of Raylo fans responded to that with racist attacks towards John Boyega. Talking about this got Spooky really upset, and she lashed out at Aisha. First, she tried defending the actions of those Raylo stands who were being racist to John Boyega by saying they were justified because he was being sexist. That argument apparently didn't hold up well, and shortly after, she started yelling and told Aisha and B to go fuck themselves, reminding her of the week she apparently tried to kill herself back when that Star Wars drama originally. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't even dip my toe in fandom drama. That shit's insane. Fandom drama, unironically, madness. Fandom drama is a unique form of American psychosis, okay? It's the worst. It is the it is the worst type of drama. It's completely inconsequential, and also people, like, literally kill each other over it. It's insane. It's so bad. It's so fucking bad. It happened. And then she left the harem server, as well as my Discord. She also called B and Aisha a cunt. Then she went on a rampage through all the servers that she was in, including her own, where she posted this announcement. At everyone, anti Raylo, the last Jedi speak, will get an instant ban, even if you're joking. I don't care anymore. I don't get upset at very many things. I'd honestly rather you mock me for my disabilities, me being a girl, and the fact I got sexually assaulted and raped before I let you mock me and make fun of the two things I mentioned. Thank you and good night. It's so fucking easy. It's eat such easy fucking rules, but half of you can't fucking follow them at everyone that also includes outside of the server as well. So if I see you say that shit, you get kicked. Notice how she said she would rather be made fun of for being raped when she was younger than for being a Raylo stan and liking The Last Jedi. This trivializing of ableism and sexual assault also really upset the other women in our friend group, and we'll get to that later. Shortly after this, she started making suicidal threats, blaming the other women in the group for her attempted suicide, and just went missing. Aisha ended up coordinating with a bunch of her friends and getting in contact with her local police and telling them she was threatening suicide, which she was. Regardless of whether or not she was serious, holding the threat of suicide and self-harm uh, over the head of someone else is abusive behavior. This that is true, by the way. Even if someone is having a mental breakdown, even if someone is having a mental health crisis, that doesn't mean, that doesn't excuse how hurtful and harmful and abusive holding suicide over someone else's head is. Truly a painful situation. 
And if anyone's ever had that happen, if any of you have ever had someone hold suicide over your head specifically targeting you, it's really fucking hard to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Fawn came in to say, yes, Fawn has dealt with that. It's really, that's really scary. And also terrible. And yes, I agree. It is abusive. Even if somebody is having a mental health emergency, that doesn't mean that you don't take, you don't, you know, take kindness on them and, you know, don't make things worse. But yeah, let's continue. This is just the tip of the iceberg in regards to the drama and the trouble that she was going to cause, though. The fact you didn't message me missing for five days shows how much of snakes you are. You never cared. Too bad it's all your faults. You can deny it, but it's all your faults that I attempted to kill myself. It's all your faults. Um, I should point out that we all did try to message her. She had us all blocked. We literally couldn't. She went missing for about five days. Now, I don't know for sure what happened, but apparently she got bake racked for her own safety. She came back five days later and started messaging me again. It was obvious she wanted back into the friend group, and we all agreed that after the stunt she pulled, it wasn't oh. happening. For those who don't know what the Baker Act is, the Baker Act is a rule that says that you can be uh, you can be put into a like mental facility if people have reason to believe that you are uh like a danger to yourself it's a very controversial thing yeah darwin simp uh 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 with the five dollars where can i access these xander hall nudes well you'll have to talk to xander hall of course not me but thank you for the five dollars no twitch stream tonight no twitch stream tonight everyone else felt really hurt by the things she said to yeah them. i don't think it's federal i think it's just a couple of states that have that the Baker Act allowed the Air Force to ship me to Texas for my own safety. Yeah, there's reasons why it's con controversial. It's not a good thing. I'm just bringing it up so people know what it is. Yeah. She tried to blame them for her self-harm and made numerous statements that if she did kill herself, it would be their fault. This is some seriously abusive behavior, to, and you should never levy this towards someone and expect them to forgive you. She's also used her autism as an excuse for her behavior, but I don't think that justifies her actions. She came into my DMs and we talked a little bit, and I tried not to give the impression that we were still friends. I was nice to her, but I wanted to let her down easy considering her state. I figured that just leaving her on red would set her off, so I messaged her back as little as possible. She did start making these weird cryptic tweets though, and they kind of weirded me out. I should be clear, I think Xander Hall's a good- Yeah, unironically, the literally disabled and a minor excuse, except not a minor, uh, not a minor but definitely the neurodivergent one. But the the reality is neurodivergence is not an excuse for abusive behavior. And I say this as somebody who is neurodivergent. It can explain, it can help be a part of a reconciliation process, but it's not an excuse. It isn't. It's never an excuse. Leftist and someone... And when I say that, like that's not just, that's not just like a... Guys, when I say that, that's not just like a, a um, that's not just like a, a pablum. It's not just me saying that like, oh yeah, you know, that doesn't excuse it. No, seriously, think about the structure of it. An excuse is something that allows you to uh, go by a, uh, a, a, an issue. So an excuse that works, that's real, that's legitimate is I was trying to get over to your house and I was really late for the party we had planned because of traffic. That's an excuse. You can't really control traffic. You got a reason for why you did the thing that bothered somebody else. An explanation is only useful in terms of of uh, of of reconciliation, of coming to peace with something that went wrong. Um, I am somebody who's I am literally neurodivergent, like like I am. Uh, I have I I have uh, been diagnosed with both ADHD and by uh, borderline personality disorder. Um, and these things are never excuses for my behavior or anyone's. And in fact, you will live a better and fuller life if you understand the forces that make you come to certain conclusions. But if you recognize that the decisions are ultimately yours, that you choose how to act, even if you don't choose how you feel, or even if you don't choose, uh, how, how, uh, how tense something is in the moment or how much something hurts. Okay. We need. Also, I'm going to hit the restroom him real quick. Listen up. So no I'm amount of weirdos playing to cancel him can get me to talk to them about it unless you offer me food and a place to live. So here she is saying she doesn't plan on making it into drama unless someone offers her a place to live and food. 
That part at the end may sound like a joke, but just wait. She's actually serious. I unfollowed her because I thought it would be best not to interact with her anymore, but I guess that was a bad idea because this was her reaction. Xander Hall unfollowed, so now I can safely say it. Fuck him. Shortly after this, she started tweeting at a million words a minute about how I'd promised her a place to live and how she's poor and was counting on living with me and my girlfriend. I never made this promise. I joked multiple times about how I wanted to buy a mansion and import a harem to live in it, but this was really obviously not serious. No one else in our friend group thought that I wasn't joking. None of them thought that I was serious. Maybe I could have been more clear that I was joking, but I feel like the context of our talks made it pretty obvious that I wasn't being real. She's claimed that her autism was the reason that she wasn't able to pick up on the humor, but I have screenshots that I think pretty much confirm the fact that we made it clear that this group was not a romantic relationship. I also joked a lot around this time about buying an offshore oil rig and starting an independent country like Diamond Dogs from Metal Gear Solid 5, so I figured the sarcasm was obvious. Don't get me wrong, we were friends, so the idea of her visiting was out there, but we were by no means in a relationship, and I never offered her a place to live or to buy her food or anything like that. We also never made any concrete plans for us to hang out in real life. It was just kind of an idea floating out there for the far future. During her Twitter meltdown, she eventually started saying that I was supposed to be her sugar daddy and that she was proud she could have pulled a parasite on me. It turns out she clearly only wanted to be friends or in a relationship with me because she thought it, she could get money or social capital out of it. Holy shit, I just realized I performed the plot of Parasite on Xander Hall. Now that is really performing well as a leftist. So who's going to be my next sugar daddy? There are two Xanders in my life. One of the Xanders is my closest friend who I care about very deeply and would die for. The other one is Xander Hall. One of them is my closest friend. The other can buy me food. They're basically on the same level. Later, she started ranting on Twitter nonstop, demanding an apology and spamming my notifications, so I decided to block her. I thought ignoring her would be the best option here. Then, I kid you not, she made a new Twitter account to avoid the block called Fuck You, then like a bunch of numbers. Then she goes back to spamming me and demanding an apology. I actually thought this was pretty funny since, ironically, she was harassing me at this point, and uh, her tweets sounded like they came from Trump a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was in a voice chat at the time, and we laughed about it since it was such a weird combination of creepy and hysterical. Now, maybe this is a bit insensitive, but this was someone who had insulted my friends, tried to threaten suicide to manipulate them, admitted to using me so she could get money and a place to live, and was now harassing me and making a new Twitter account to by bypass the block so that they could demand I apologize to her because she thought we were in a romantic relationship. We figured we should bite the bullet and pull her into VC chat, and I might as well apologize to her even though I didn't do anything wrong. Listen, not safe for work chats can be okay, but they require a lot of work. And not safe for work chats that don't have people facilitating them who are willing to put in a lot of work are generally not very safe places. So be careful about the not safe for work chats you participate in, and if you are a creator or an aspiring Discord uh, runner, Put a lot of, make sure you put effort, maybe even pay a mod or two specifically to manage your not safe for work discord. Because those things can become hotbeds of danger. And we, it's it's up to people who run discord channels to make them safer. Okay? Just saying. Um, I just want her to calm down since this drama was already stressing me out. And it was also stressing everyone else out. While we were in that voice call, she started crying and admitted to wearing a mask the whole time during our friendship and pretending to be someone she wasn't. This call made me soup. Cherry says, Cherry says, Chud Logic said in his coverage earlier today that if you're a small streamer, don't ever create a not safe for work chat. It's just asking for something to go wrong. Yeah, Chud Logic had a bad experience with it too. I think that not safe for work chats should be reserved for not safe for work communities that are devoted to that. Um, like if I ever make a not safe for work channel of my own, it will be for me and my personal friends and not connected to this political entertainer st stuff. It's too messy. It's way too messy. I just don't think it's a good move. I really don't think it is. I think there's too many vulnerability points and that most of the time it's just a liability for the streamers. There is so many places to find horniness online 
And if you make friends in a streamer's chat who you want to be horny with, invite them to your friends list. Become friends with them. Talk to them. Maybe you find another server. But every every server doesn't need to have a not safe for work one. I just it's too messy and too rich and, and, and too risky in my opinion. Because there's the other side of it, which is as somebody who's who's providing a space, you know, there's a limited amount of like monitoring that should and can be done in any discord right um yeah so like so like there's a limited amount that you can actually oversee everything that happens in your discord and not safe for work chats are can be particularly dangerous because people can use not safe for work chats to get in to connect with each other on very intimate ways that can become exploitative that's not to say that all of them are most of them are not the vast majority of interactions that occur there are not going to be exploitative but because of the nature of the space that's a vulnerability and the reality is that most discord runners do not realistically have the energy to responsibly run a not safe for work space so, yeah. Of course, of course. And there's the other risk of people screenshotting and spreading pictures. You got to be very careful about that. You have to be very careful about that. Super uncomfortable since she was crying and women crying has always kind of made me feel awkward on top of the fact that she was screaming at some parts during the call. After she admitted she was basically trying to get money and a place to live out of me, I decided to apologize for no other reason than to calm her down. I'd hoped this would at least end the drama, and she said she'd delete her tweets, uh, but she kept going anyway the next morning, and things got worse. <clears throat> the YouTuber Thought Slime caught wind of this drama and both mm. irresponsibly and impulsively tweeted about it and said I had a sex cult. He also did this after yeah, exactly blocking me, exactly so I was unable this. to defend myself when Precisely he was making this. these blatantly false, unsubstantiated accusations towards me for like his 40,000 Twitter followers. Now, this whole sex cult thing came out of nowhere. It's almost like he made it up and wanted it to be true or something. Spooky's claims have changed a lot over the last month, but at the time, she actually corrected Thought Slime and told him not to call it a sex cult. Shortly after, he refused to apologize to me and tried to justify... Do you see what went do you see what's particularly sinister here now? The actual person who made allegations corrected Thought Slime and Thought Slime still didn't retract. His actions and probably the slimiest milk toast backpedaling non apology I've ever seen. Yeah, look at this. This is the non apology. This is what you got. This is what Zan got. Should I have used the term sex cult? Evidently not. That is against the wishes of the person who brought this scandal to light. This scandal. A, a, a discord of five people who were familiar with one another. That was the scandal. Notice how he still calls it a scandal. Notice how he's still contributing to the lie, even in his apology. The thought slime slime. That typical Mildred slime is all over it. However, the fact that my phrasing has become the takeaway here is the very obvious redirect. No, dude. Yes. Yes and no. It's not a redirect. You lied about what was going on. You super lied. You didn't just little lie. You massively lied. Dude, you massively lied. I will not accept equivocation of my fo poor phrasing when calling out abuse to the abuse itself. The abuse that you never looked into, that you're calling a scandal, the abuse that was f a five-person discord and an interpersonal disagreement among those that you and your massive following jumped on. Why? Because you have a personal beef against Xander Hall. That's not an apology at all. This is a non-apology. I don't even think this is a half-apology. There's a very specific reason I emphasize that YouTubers should not date their fans, but I did not think we would arrive at the sex cult portion of the danger quite so quickly. I'm lacking context. Is this referencing Xander Hall TV? Yup. So here's where you have Thought Slime directly pointing at, at Xander Hall. He doesn't even have the deniability of a subtweet. He directly pointed at Xander Hall here. The situation is messy, to be sure, but calling it a sex cult is this honest hyperbole. No, it isn't, actually. Then shortly after, Spooky told him, no, it wasn't a sex cult, because, well, that 
idea kind of conflicted with the narrative she was trying to push at the time, so then he tweeted, Z Xander Hall and TS had no bad blood before this. It came from nowhere. You want to know where I think it comes from? I think that Xander Hall, I think that Xander Hall attracted the ire uh, of Thought Slime because Thought Slime is a little Martin Prince and he thought he saw an opportunity to pick on somebody smaller than him and look good. He thought he could get little good boy, little good boy woke brownie points and, uh, and by by jumping on and doubling down on, on Xander Hall. And then he realized that he fucked up, but he couldn't go back because that's a pretty huge fuck up to admit. And so he's just kept doubling down. I don't know if it's because of Vosh. I just think that I think Thought Slime, for a number of reasons, saw Xander Hall as a justified target for no real reason. Just because. Because I think I don't I don't think very highly of Thought Slime. I don't think Thought Slime does a lot of deep thinking. I think he just saw a free opportunity was like, hey there, hey there, I'm gonna I'm gonna heckin' muffin you. This. Should I have used the term sex cult? Evidently not. That is against the wishes of the person who brought this scandal to light. I'm sorry to have done that and upset them. However, the fact that my phrasing has become the takeaway here is a very obvious redirect. At the time, Spooky's claims were that we were in a relationship. This wasn't true. I'd promised her a place to live and food. Again, not true. And I'd essentially dumped her because she had a mental breakdown, which she used as an excuse for her behavior when she was lashing out at the rest of the friend group. After a while, her accusations started to evolve into, I manipulated her and used my power as a streamer to take advantage of a fan. This is a long shot from her original claim that we were in a consensual relationship and I promised her the world, but her story has been changing a lot depending on the groups of people that have taken her under their wing. A few weeks ago, she was correcting Thought Slime, who tweeted that I had a sex cult, telling him it wasn't that, to now hanging out and retweeting people saying I was an abuser, who was taking advantage of my parasocial power over my fans. Like I said before, none of them were ever fans of me, and they all joined my server out of their own free will and actively asked to join. Right now, she seems to have fallen into the anti-breadtube crowd. You know what I'm talking- Yeah, the power of my 5k subscriber YouTube channel. Yeah, it's really funny too, because we're gonna get into some funny shit, okay? I just want us all to have all the context, you know? Call it a- call it a carryover from my my drama mama habits. I love us getting the context, you know? You're gonna see some funny shit in a little bit. Talking about people like Jamie. You know her from calling Peter Coffin a pedophile and starting a ton of, ton of drama about it a few months back, right? Who are constantly foaming at the mouth to accuse any bread tuber they don't like of some kind of sexual misconduct. That seems to be their go-to accusation since they know if they spread it around enough and smear someone's name, they can possibly hey, end Nikolai, their Hey, Nikolai, welcome. They've been Get some hugs. boosting her and trying Everybody to Everybody, welcome new imp Nikolai. Welcome to the chat. Get some hugs out there for Nikolai. Welcome. And this into drama when it really should never have been a big deal. She's even started live streaming on Twitch and seems to be actively trying to build an online presence based on the idea that she is a victim of Xander Hall's abusive sex cult. Here's a tweet where she basically admits that she plans to become a streamer and use this drama to make money. If I ever become a streamer, I'm definitely making that one you're a simp into t-shirts, Lamau. He might as well get me a house in a different way. I just need around $3,000. for streaming equipment because the majority has to be pink. Also an extra 2000 for cosplay, cute clothing, the blue wig, makeup, and bedroom stuff for an aesthetic background. Also, my bed is breaking. Well, right now this is all he said, she said. Granted, I've shown screenshots to back up my claims, but there are still a lot of people who probably wouldn't feel comfortable taking my side at this point. Well, unfortunately, I'm not the only one who's being affected by this drama. The other women in the group, my friends, have also been dealing with a ton of anxiety because of Spooky's lying and trying to frame them as victims of sexual abuse. They originally wanted to stay quiet, and we hoped that this drama would just pass on its own, but Spooky just won't let it go, and she keeps lying and trying to turn this drama into a, a way to profit. So I'm going to go over a bunch of the claims that have been levied by her and the people she's been running with. Literally everyone else who was directly involved with this and was in the server are really upset with Spooky for trying to profit off the false narrative that the server they like to hang out and occasionally horny post was some kind of abusive sex cult. Especially since some of them- So this is a moment where I'm going to pause and just make a little commentary. <clears throat> On my last stream, we did a drama mama talking about Joss Whedon. 
a guy who has been uh, alleged of abuse from by by dozens over the years of corroborating witnesses a guy whose story is fucking disgusting and makes us all doom the fuck out and i know that when you hear stories like that that it's possible to go damn the world really sucks you know you can never trust anybody it seems like everybody you like is it is an evil person and the truth is that's not the case yes everybody is flawed everybody does things bad some people even do really bad things uh, at times in their life and are and recover from it and bounce back from it but when you make a claim that somebody is being abusive when you make a claim that somebody is uh is is uh, uh sexually harassing someone when you make a claim that somebody is uh, a pedophile you can't just leave those unevidenced you can't just not back that up especially if you're doing so in a credible setting especially if you double down on that i know that there are times where people go what is this dude a fucking pedo that's not even the same thing even making a joke about somebody being a pedo even being like oh i bet matt walsh is a pedo oh i bet obama is a pedo even making a joke like that which i would allege is irresponsible is not the same thing as putting out an allegation or making a uh tonally apparent allegation they're not even the same fucking thing do you understand that and there's a reason why i take allegations like this seriously especially when it is a second hand allegation or third hand or more in this case because of how distant thoughts thought slime was but nonetheless thought slime was able to broadcast this allegation to a lot of people I feel like this should be clear after the dough stuff. No, the do it should have been clear before that. But the problem is that this is a recurring pattern. And I desperately want people in my audience and above and beyond to actually digest this, to get it into your head that there has to be a, a stopper between <clears throat> read on the internet and share on the internet. There has to be a, <coughs> excuse me, my voice is getting so dry. There has to be a step there of verification. There has to be a step of going, is this actually true? Or else this shit keeps going on and a lot of people get hurt because of it. And, and it makes it harder for everyone. And yes, it's time for me to hydrate a little bit. It makes it far harder for everyone. <clears throat> Because it becomes more difficult to find when things are actually going wrong. This is what cancel culture truly is. <sighs> I hate the term cancel culture. And I don't talk about these things in terms of their relationship to cancel culture. Because I unironically think that conservatives have made the discussion around cancel culture completely useless have dealt with sexual abuse in the past and they find it extremely disrespectful that she would lie about it and, and try to minimize sexual abuse. All right, here's the first claim. They took down my ID so I could join the NSFW section. This is a TOS violation. This is the standard procedure in my server for people to get 18 plus role on Discord, as well as many other Discord servers that have NSFW sections. We need to verify that anyone in the server who is engaging in not safe for work content whether it be sexting, posting nudes, or just talking about sex in general, is at least 18 years or older. The way it works is if you want 18 plus role, you have to send a picture of your ID to a moderator or admin that shows your date of birth on it. You're allowed to cover your name, your address, or any other info. We just need to know that you are not a minor. We don't need anyone getting doxxed. Now, I feel it's important to add that this was not my idea in the first place. I didn't really want an NSFW section. Everyone else wanted it though, and eventually after popular demand, I caved and let my mods make an NSFW section. And then they set up the system. I also didn't go in there much until around when I took my break from streaming because I got so bored. Xander Hall started complimenting the pictures I posted in the NSFW section, and even though I wasn't attracted to him, I was flattered that a YouTuber I was a fan of liked these pictures. 
This is probably one of the most damning accusations towards me. The idea that Spooky is a fan of me, and I was engaging in sexual behavior with her. If this was true, yeah, this would definitely be a problem. Now, it's technically possible that she really was a fan who watched my content and followed me closely. The thing is, I don't really have any reason besides her word now to believe that. She never showed up in a single stream of mine until after we became friends, she never commented on any of my mm. videos, and she didn't even join my Discord until after a huge ban slash kicking purge in Vosh's server in which a bunch of refugees migrated to my server instead. In fact, when we talked in voice chat, she never acted like she was a fan, and even mentioned well into our friendship that she just started watching my videos and liked them. The other women involved that were in the server can back this up as well, since we were all in VC when this happened. So, was she a fan of me? I really don't think so, and neither does anyone else involved. Zan asked to be invited to Spooky's server after seeing her nudes. She invited literally every one of us to her server. She asked us to join. She would even at everyone in her server a few times a day, telling us to join the voice chat and talk to her because she was bored. I didn't even I didn't even know she had a server until she told me. She's the one that wanted me to join. He promised me a place to live with him and his girlfriend, and had me get vetted with her before joining the harem. He said he was serious, too. So what actually happened was I was planning on getting a place with my girlfriend when this virus lets up and transportation gets easier. The idea of having a harem house and having her live with me was an obvious joke that no one else present thought was serious. She has claimed I said this in a voice chat with some of her friends in it, but I never even joked about this outside of the voice chat of the harem discord. So yeah, it's impossible for them to have heard me talk about it, whether it was a joke or not. Of course, my girlfriend had to approve of her- Everyone, <clears throat> I'm very sorry. I must confess. When I joked about buying an oil rig to build Mama Base on, there is no oil rig for me to purchase. It was just a joke. I'm sorry for those of you who were disappointed. I do not have the money, nor will I ever, nor will I ever be able to find a decommissioned oil rig, at least to my knowledge. So I'm very sorry my joke about building a paramilitary oil rig uh, for Mama Base is, was, it was, it was, it was, it was a joke. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm very sorry. I'm, I'm very, very sorry. Well, 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 Ada Stardust, that part might happen. It's just the oil rig, you know. Yeah, oil rigs can't really support sheep, deer and sheep anyway unless you bring in vegetables, basically. Sorry, everybody. Really sorry. I know, I'm a fucking liar. I'm really sorry, everybody. I just figured, you know, we're talking about you know, Zan confessing that the joke he made that one time wasn't a literal promise. Yeah. In, in our friend group, we all had to approve. This was to avoid drama and awkward situations since we did have NSFW stuff being Wait, posted what? in no there. Oil rig? It would have been <sighs> really bad if we weren't all cool with a certain person being in there, especially since many of us were posting True, Destiny was right about me. That could be potentially uh, not something you want to get out there. It was extremely vague. I'm the worst I knew bad all the faith other ever. women weren't ready for a relationship. Bad faith, no oil rig, demon mama. But it wasn't clear enough. I don't think I ever gave the impression that this was anything other than a friend group with an NSFW chat. I'm pretty sure the other women even made it clear that this wasn't a romantic relationship. For some reason, it was just her who inter- So, n uh, other people in the server were trying to tell Spooky to, n to not go across the line. Basically, to be like, hey, no, wait, like... You're, you're taking this, you're going above and beyond with this than what anybody else is here. Interpreted it this way. Than what it's anybody else here is feeling. I didn't see this when the conversation happened because the fact that she got a- Rhodes says, but if you were in a position to get an oil rig and make mama base, would you do it without a single moment of hesitation? If I were in a position to get an oil rig and make mama base, I would do that. And my goal would be to find cool people to come literally be my mama base staff. It would be sick as fuck. We'd have animals, we'd, we'd have a, 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 a boat division, we'd have a fitness center, it'd be sick as fuck, okay? Yeah, the strip club could be possible. Let's, let's be real, though. 
I'm not going to spend a million dollars on some fucking Hassan house here. I'm buying the oil rig, okay? That's me. Set and started crying when she was told it wasn't a relationship. Should have been a big red flag for me. I'll accept that that is my bad. In hindsight, she clearly wasn't in a place where she was Will there be a wolf dog wandering around? Yes. Yes, there will be. If I could afford... Listen, I only have Yoda right now. As far as uh, that type of pet goes, okay? But if I had an oil rig, I would have two dogs at least. At least two dogs. And one of them would indeed be a rescued wolf dog. 100% for a non-romantic friend group like this but that doesn't excuse her behavior i certainly would have paid more attention and exactly, noticed Jim. some of the early signs um that it might not have worked out but unfortunately i missed this so that's on me he was the cqc for division beg for boob pics constantly he wasn't subtle about it okay so literally Play everyone like a damn fiddle. Out on this one you posted nudes unprompted in every NSFW section, as well as every other server you were in almost daily. It was like clockwork. I would wake up every afternoon and see them in there. I may have posted booby like twice, but I never begged for nudes. I didn't have to. Booby? You posted them all the time, and so did all the other women in the server. In fact, you begged me to post my dick pics for literal days and got super excited when I finally gave in and posted them. Bum, 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 bum. But we'll get to that later. Everyone else was also in the voice chat and saw when this happened, so they can back me up. You're just lying. Wait, has Zummies been a meme in your in your community that I've been unaware from aware of? Holy fuck. Never beg anyone for nudes? Wrong! If you have an established relationship with someone who's cool with you begging for nudes, then you can beg for nudes. You want to know who... Wait. Nope. 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 There are There is a time and a place, okay? I'm not going to say that anyone's ever begged me for nudes and been granted it. But there's a time and a place. But you got to have that established relationship. See, that's the thing. You got to have that established relationship. Don't beg strangers... Or people you don't have an established relationship for nudes. That's fucking weird. Now, if you have a mistress or an owner or you've got a, uh, a, a, maybe you're a pay pig and you have an established relationship with, uh, you know, a fin dom or something like that. There you go. You could go ahead and beg for nudes. You are all good. But that's because you have an established relationship of trust. There's consent going on there. There's mutuality, you know? No trans women were allowed in the harem. This is probably one of the biggest lies that Spooky has told yet. One of the women in the group is literally trans and she knows it. She's just lying here. In fact, I have proof that she knew A was trans because here she is talking with her about her girl dick. I think I know why she lied about <laughs> this one. Okay, guys. All right. All, all, all doom and gloom and the sa and the sad pain of this relationship of this situation aside that is fucking funny i have evidence everyone i come to you now it's like we need it we need what we need is we need the fucking where where is it here hold on here we go objection objection i have evidence of her talking about her friend's girl dick your honor Allow me to bring this screenshot to the stand. <clears throat> yes, yes. Let me see. Let me see the screen. Ah, it says here that you observed and and envied her girl dick. You. It says here that in this chat record that you craved the mouthfeel of the girl dick. It says here that you made 27 jokes re referencing gridlock, a common misspelling of girl dick. Very well. Death.
The existence of A and the harem throws a wrench into the web of lies she's tried to build. A is a trans lesbian who has no sexual or romantic interest in me, and I have no interest in her. She already has a girlfriend in real life, and we've been friends for a long time. She was invited because she was cool to hang out with, and she was down to flirt with the other women in the server sometimes. Exclusively the other women. Her being in the server more or less proves that it was just a glorified group chat with an NSFW section, not some kind of, like, polyamorous sex cult. So yeah, that seems to be why Spooky coincidentally kind of forgot A's existence. Zan posted a dick pic and made it an emote in the server. Yes, after being asked for days, possibly more than a week, if I remember correctly, I Sister finally Rose did with the $5, post dollars, a thank dick you very pic, much. and everyone in the server, except maybe A, who didn't care, was very happy about it. However, I didn't make it an emote. I didn't want it getting spread around. Aisha made it an emote. She was the owner of the server, and was the only one with the power to add emotes. Also, everyone, especially you, would spam the dick emote in NSFW chat all day, and it became a meme. I don't know why you bring this up as an example of the server being a relationship, when it was literally a meme everyone would spam all day when we got super bored. I know we kind of already talked about this one, but I really want to just nail it home here on this, on this particular subject. Spooky was a fan of Xander Hall. I think this claim is the one that really needs to get debunked uh, once and for all, and I hear it constantly, and it seems to be the main source of contention that I hear from most people. Spooky had never spoken in a single live stream, commented on a single video, and didn't even have an account on my website until after we became friends. Also, I specifically remember being in a voice chat with her and her mentioning that she was, had just started watching some of my videos, and this was weeks into us being friends. And on top of that, she hadn't even made a, an account on my website where she would watch my streams until the 8th, which was well over a week into our friendship. I guess I can't truly know whether or not she was a fan of me, but demonstrating how much she's lied already, it seems fairly reasonable that she's lying about this as well. There's just no okay. evidence to the idea that she was a fan of me prior to us becoming friends. Um, now, if she was a fan, then that would make it a lot more problematic, but that's just not the case. Xander listened to her masturbate into her phone. Sure, but it wasn't just me in the call with her. We were in a voice chat with B, Aisha, and M. After many requests, I posted a dick pic in the NSFW section, and Spooky literally screamed with excitement and immediately muted herself. Then she started typing things in the NSFW chat like, I have a dildo inside of me, and eventually unmuted and started moaning into the mic. I was cool with this, it didn't bother me, but there were other people in the call who weren't cool with it. Ironically, this was the closest to a non-consensual thing that happened in the server, and Spooky was the perpetrator. She was the one who made the other women feel uncomfortable. Now, they could have left the call if they wanted, but from what they told me, they just felt awkward. But I don't know why she would frame this as if it was some sort of, like, intimate one-on-one -on -one call between me and her. By the way, this sort of shit right here is precisely the reason why... You don't do this sort of shit as a content creator with your official accounts or anything. Take off the roll. You don't need it, okay? There's tons of fucking wild fun to be had. Have a private account. Or, if you don't have a private account, engage only with people who you have a, a IRL-like relationship with in that regard. when there were literally three other people there. Sexual things happen between basically everyone on the server, including me and some of the other women in there, um, as well as just amongst themselves, since we're all a bunch of coomers, and they were all either bi, pan, or, you know, one of them, A, actually being a lesbian, who's in no way attracted to me. Nothing sexual happened between me and A. She did flirt a little bit with the other girls, though. I should clarify, this was all done consensually and casually among adults, and we all wanted to do this. This yeah. flirtation didn't mean I'm, an I'm actual relationship, that, though, and yeah. while I don't have any screenshots of me saying it, I do have some of the other girls saying it wasn't a relationship in text chat after she asked them. Xander tweeting about it is what caused the drama. Nope, it was Thought Slime tweeting about it that caused the drama and got it really circulating. Once she started to get a lot of people behind her, she started to get signal boosted, and that was the point where there was just no avoiding it anymore. I did make a thread that debunked her current lies at the time, 
but then she started making up new better yet don't engage in sexual activity with your fans yeah i think people should be in should be incredibly reluctant to have sexual engagement with quote unquote fans uh we've we've talked about this on this stream before uh i think that content creators should be really careful about it not just for the sake of the fans but also for the sake of the content creator it's not fun to deal with this shit. It is not fun to have to navigate stupid parasocial relationships. It isn't. It isn't fun. And it doesn't fulfill the fan. Even the people who have a power kick, who are like, ooh, I love being, I love being powerful and important. That is not going to fulfill you. It will not give you what you're looking for. Just, just recognize that this shit is like engagement with fans in that way is nightmarish. It's not good. It's not healthy. It makes it almost impossible to navigate. And I promise you, there are plenty of people on the planet. No streamer is so famous that every person they meet is a fan. And also, we've talked about this in the past. We've talked about this in the past on this stream about uh, how the word fan has to be, you know, you have to be reasonable about it. I think that there is a, a conceivable situation where someone who is familiar with you through your work can um, not be a fan and have a healthy relationship with a content creator. Even if they're familiar with their work, even if they like their work, I think it's possible. But I think that's the exception and not the rule, like by far. And that people need to be incredibly careful and that if you look and think carefully, you can determine if there's a situation where someone is distanced enough to not be uh, uh, deeply influenced by the power dynamic there, by the un by the uh, unstructured power dynamic there, let's continue. New stuff to keep the fire roaring. Then she got the woke scold signal boosting her, and that's what led to me. Wait, what? Demon Mama reads YouTube chat and she reads that one. Parasocial relationships aren't good. This is known. Yeah, parasocial. Well, okay, wait, 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 wait. Parasocial relationships are value neutral. Every single person has, um, every single person has parasocial relationships. It is actually impossible in our current day and age to not have some level of parasocial relationship. It's just that parasocial relationships, um, have to be carefully observe because they are different than other types of relationships just like how a friendship and uh a being a co-worker is a different relationship there are there can be co-workers who are your friends a parasocial relationship is a type of relationship that many people have and they can be beneficial if they are treated as they are and not pretended to be something else do i have any parasocial relationships 100 percent oh when i when I met Ian McKellen, you know, the actor Ian McKellen, when I met Ian McKellen for five seconds and got his signature, that was, there was a lot of parasocial relationship fucking bullshit going on there, which I kept in check, by the way, because everyone can't help it. It happens to everyone. If you see an actor f on screen and you love their work and you dive into their work, when you meet them, they don't know who you are, but you know a huge chunk of their life. You've watched some of their most important work. That is a parasocial relationship, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. You just have to keep the expectations and the type of relationship in check and not be a weirdo. You have to keep those things. Uh, it is important to see them for what they are and to be clear eyed about it to the best of your ability. Everybody has these types. Anyway, so what I'm trying to say is parasocial relationships aren't necessarily bad. Parasocial relationships are a type of relationship that people have, but they can get out of hand. And right now in our particular uh, social milieu, because of a number of factors, the development of the internet, the way that uh, that social media is currently structured to, um, to like, uh, 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 really feed into engagement. Um, and... These types of things make it worse. Right now in, t in history, we have a particularly rough time with parasocial relationships. But as I say, every time we talk about parasocial relationships, the term parasocial was coined in 1953. 
after the advent of television and radio. That's where the term came from, was from people having parasocial relationships with television and radio stars. That's where it's that's where people first started seeing this. So it's not a new thing. It's something that's been around for a long time and there's already been lots of writing about it. They've been amplified because of the frequency of inter interaction through social media. Yeah. Video killed the radio star. Yeah, there you go. That was 80s though. Having to make this video now. Uh, and all of the other other women who are involved wanting to speak out against Spooky's lies. Um, her bullshit has just gone too far, and it's ex it's affecting all of our lives. Zan couldn't figure out that Spooky had autism and needed to be treated differently. So she admitted in the call with me shortly before thought the thought slime signal boosting happened um, that she was wearing a mask and pretending to be someone she wasn't. You can't blame me for not being able to tell that someone has a mental condition when they are actively trying to hide it from me, so I don't know. Also, wouldn't me refusing to be friends with someone because they have autism be super Why fucking hello? ableist? Why hello? Say hello, everyone. Say Go. Her privacy. They don't exist anywhere except for the other servers she would post them, like in her own. But I've got no control over that. Um, that's for her to delete, and it's all up for her if she wants to delete those off the internet. I, I can't do anything about it. Um, besides, even if I did still have them, I wouldn't post them because oh, thank revenge you. porn is I wrong. appreciate Xander that, not, not you. Xander seeked Spooky out when she started posting nudes in the NSFW channel. Not true. Me and Spooky talked a few times before she did that. It wasn't until I took my break, which was coincidentally around the same time the NSFW channel started, that we really started talking in VC and, you know, becoming friends. Um, they were somewhat related, but it was mostly a coincidence. And I didn't invite her to the harem until we'd been friends for like a week. Xander Hall made Aisha Oh, creep. God damn it. Now all of the now all of the fucking Hannibal fandom is in here oh, talking no. about, ooh, brain with some nice fava, ve fava beans and a shianti or whatever he says. He says it weird. Ate the harem Discord server. That was a shitty thing to do. This is just a straight up lie. Aisha literally offered and even insisted on making the new server herself. She just likes making Discord servers and was able to add all sorts of cool plugins and bots such as the one that let us catch and collect Pokemon by typing in chat. Aisha literally wanted to create it and was the only one with any power in the server. This is such a weird thing to lie about too. Well, that's basically the long and short of the drama. I took a break from streaming for a while, made some friends, and decided to join a Discord server with them that we jokingly called My Harem. We had a good time until Spooky freaked out over some Star Wars drama and left shortly after, threatening to kill herself and blaming her potential so. suicide and the other women in the server. When she came back, we decided not to let her return to our friend group, and she decided to start this drama. Thought Slime and a- Duck Shoe says, so Anthony Hopkins or Mads Mickelson? Why not both? A bunch of other fucking scumbags decided to signal boost her baseless accusations despite having literally no proof it was true, and she realized she could profit off this exposure. Then the woke scold started signal boosting her, and now she claims to have gone from we were in a relationship and you promised me the world to you manipulated and abused me using your parasocial power. At the end of the day, she was just using me to try to escape a shitty living situation. It doesn't really seem like she cared about me that much as a friend. From her recent actions on Twitter and in this Twitch livestream, which is where I got all of these claims from to respond to, she multiple times makes claims about how she wants to try to make a lot of money off of streaming, and she basically wants to boost a career or an online platform off of the, the idea of being a survivor, a Xander Hall survivor. She kind even admitted in the stream Romania. that she plans on reaching out to other YouTubers and streamers who don't like me to spread this misinformation. She used Corviday and Thought Slime as an example of two people who she already reached out to. God knows who else she'll try to get on her side. Anyway, I'm going to publish a archive of relevant screenshots that can be accessed via the description of this video. They'll be mildly edited in order to conceal the identity of the other women involved, but me and Spooky will remain uncensored unless what we posted was like NSFW or something. Now, I can't speak about what Spooky might claim in the future. She might start making up a ton of new shit to keep the fire going uh, in the next few days after this video goes out. I really can't know. I can't see into the future. But I would hope that this video did a good, good enough job showing that she's a liar and kind of exonerating Yikes. me of these uh, these false accusations that if she starts making a bunch of new baseless claims that you guys will know that she's probably lying 
Um, granted, I mean, I can't know what she'll say, but that's basically all that's really relevant. Um, so I do appreciate you watching, and I appreciate you watching this far. As a final word, please spread this video around. Liking it, commenting, and sharing really helps. I've only been a real YouTuber for like a year now, and I already have false allegations smearing my name. I would appreciate it if this video could reach as many people as possible so these lies can be debunked forever. Anyway, thanks for watching. Xander Hall, out. Do you think right. people are- Wait, that's not what I wanted. I did not want- I did not want Felix and Hassan right now. No, Felix, Hassan, go home. I didn't invite you onto my screen. Wait, I did, because I clicked, but whatever. Um, <coughs> okay. So, um, the first thing in my mind, after watching this video, is, goddamn, isn't it unfortunate that Xander Hall was put in a position where he felt like he had to- uh, expose all of these honestly pretty embarrassing things and doesn't it suck that specifically because of the actions of other content creators the careless actions of other content creators in this instance was Xander Hall put in a position to have to embarrass himself publicly or else take a pretty severe accusation on the chin which I don't think he should have done I think he made the right decision here and here I'm going to tell you something because I remember when this first happened and when I saw so many content creators uh, coming out against Xander Hall, I was like, damn, was this really happening? And then I discovered, no, actually, this wasn't credible. And what people were jumping on effect that even reached me and made me think twice and go, wow, damn, a lot of people are talking about this. Maybe there's some credibility here. But the reality is, there wasn't. And in fact, what was actually going on was much more complex, much more personal, much more embarrassing, and absolutely uh, not uh, appropriate for other YouTubers to be jumping on as if they were doing some sort of general favor or protecting people. I just want, just, I just want us to take a moment and look at what the ultimate structure of how this works is. Thought Slime jumped on this presumably to what uh warn people about debate bros or warn people about uh, uh certain streamers as if that is even his responsibility as as if mildred is actually any sort of protector of the world and never even did the research necessary to make a determination if this would be protecting anyone no let's be real this is a, a, a pretty clear example of someone signal boosting something against someone they don't like without actually caring whether it's true or not. Yeah, what, the dirt bag left or whatever was the term that people used at the time? And then video SAS pull off these kinds of things? Don't do that. It's not video SAS. It's just one fucking dude. The shithead left? I don't know. People can say whatever faction they want, but it's pretty fucking it's pretty fucking ridiculous to me that, that this is the level that it gets to. And I don't know. It feels bad to me, right? Like, I don't know. Watching that entire video and thinking on it, it feels pretty bad to watch someone have to expose the the intimate parts of their, you know, technically online because they're connected through Discord, but not attached to a stream at all, just their private life have to divulge all these details in the name of 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 clearing his name that Xander Hall would have to delve into all of this yeah the Martin Prince left that's what that's what we should call it TS called Xan a chud streamer yesterday oh yeah I think we're gonna get into that what's happening now see uh we took a little bit of a journey and went and watched Xander Hall's video because I think it's fair that everyone who's paying attention to this drama should hear both sides we heard the accusations now we've heard the defense and i think the defense is pretty solid i think it's pretty clear cut and dry i think that everything that zan presented shows that zan's presentation of the story was accurate um and correct and that's pretty fair thank you Paul. appreciate that 
Um, so let's see what else we got going on here, okay? Because we got a couple more, a uh, couple more screenshots to go through before we're able to to catch up to the modern time to tie this all back together to why we're talking about thought slime again today. Oh yes, I'm sure he deleted everything, but we've got him here. Don't worry. So this is still the old stuff, okay? Here we go. It'd be a lot easier for me to to uh to let go of YouTube left tube drama if the people I'm trying to ignore would just leave me alone instead of constantly escalating the conflict and sending their dipshit fans to harass me wherever I go. So this is a pretty useless statement. Uh, just saying a bunch of allegations without anything specific. Very vague, very whiny. Uh, but I mean, come on, Martin Prince of YouTube over here. Uh, is is uh, is is definitely got the whiny part of everything down. I think that Thought Slime's channel could best be described as an extended whine. It's kind of just like, you know, that's the whole channel, like a one extended, ten year long, very loud whine. Um, and uh, and then somebody here says, apologize to Xander Hall. Shrugs. Actually, they said Xander Thal, but that's okay. And then put a shrug emoji. Sorry I offended your favorite creep, says Thought Slime. So, un undoubtedly, I'm sure Thought Slime would characterize this as um, harassment. Somebody just being like, hey, you said a lie. You should, you should correct that and apologize, because he didn't. By the way, yeah. So here we go. Here's No Nothing says, What evidence do you have of him being a creep? Your vendetta against him seems pretty petty and personal. This is other people involved in this space going, Hey, dude, it seems like you're being a little unfair. Hey, look, here's Gayfesh. You literally started this and won't apologize and are complaining that people are criticizing you for it. If you don't want to be caught up in left tube drama, don't start left tube drama. Yeah, remember that Thought Slime was the one who levied those allegations in the first place. Someone says, Shuan had described Thought Slime as Blue's Clues for lefties, which I thought was funny. I feel like that's a little bit cruel to Blue's Clues. Yeah. Blue's Clues has significantly better production value than Thought Slime's videos. And, and here's the thing. I even think that some of Thought Slime's videos are pretty enjoyable. I remember he did a video um, talking about, um, I think it was the Proud Boys. And I thought that was a pretty fucking good video. So it's not like I have some like giant vendetta against him and what he does. Although I do think he is a giant whiner and his presentation uh, kind of annoys the shit out of me in his videos because they're all presented kind of like whining. Even if I think there's some good ones. Uh, Thought Slime, according to Thought Slime's profile, any all pronouns, dude plus. So to me, dude plus, any all pronouns, I think I think he's fine with mask stuff. Anyway, let's continue. I made a whole video about how I don't care about pissing off toxic people in the community anymore. So get mad. I'm done giving leeway. Anytime one of these fucks is criticized, the critic is accused of manufacturing drama. We've been through this song and dance so many times. I don't care about whatever mental gymnastics you have to perform to be okay with abusive behavior. I don't care if you unsubscribe or delete your Patreon donations because I need to be able to sleep at night. I'd rather live with whatever lingering harassment they can dish out than more guilt about not speaking up. Now keep in mind, this is referencing his tweet. He... His tweet where he accused without evidence another content creator of operating a sex cult. A, a YouTuber who's much smaller than him that has seemingly never really beefed with him. Is this not cry bullying? Oh, this is definitely cry bullying. This is going, I'm going to, without without provocation, make a massive allegation against a much smaller streamer that I don't like for whatever reason, and then I'm going to cry as though I'm, like, the biggest victim on the planet. I don't care if you unsubscribe. I must sleep at night. I'm such... Like, this is this is a massive amount of moralizing theatrics. This is just like, oh, I was on my crusade against the sex pests. The sex pests who I don't have any evidence are sex pests and are just people that I personally don't like. Like, what the fuck? 
120 was the day that Twitter said no to cry bullies. Good. Well, guess what? 121 is day two that the internet, that Twitter left Twitter said no to cry bullies. Because fuck this shit. Should I have, this was the one we saw before. This was the half-assed apology that isn't an apology at all. And in fact, just doubles down. Fuck this. He deserves to be hit hard. I'm not beating around the bush here, and I'm not going to be polite and restrained in calling out abuse like this. We don't need to treat this guy with kid gloves, and trust me, he won't return the favor. Also, it is not hyperbole to say that having a group of women who are sexually devoted to you while you are not to them and starting plans to live in a shared sex spa space or shared space is a sex cult. That's not me being glib. That's calling a spade a spade. Wrong. 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 Uh, wrong. Okay, everybody? Do not come. Do not go. We're not fucking moving from here for a second, okay? Listen, having a group of women who are sexually devoted to you while you are not to them and starting plans to live in a shared space is not a sex cult, okay? That is not what a sex cult is. That is not a sex cult, okay? And it does a massive disservice to the victims of sex cults to call that a sex cult. And it does even more of a disservice to the victims of sex cults to call a discord group that had a falling out a sex cult. Okay? This is... And, and the level of seriousness... I, I just hope you recognize that... Like, look at this. Fuck this. He deserves to be hit hard. I'm not beating around the bush here, and I'm not going to be polite and restrained in calling out abuse like this. This is a this is a dude. Mildo, fucking Thought Slime, Mildred, Moldred, whatever the fuck. Thought Slime is sitting here alleging, to, urging followers to go extremely hard on a smaller YouTuber, younger than him, based on false allegations that he is asserting are significantly larger. There is no difference here between, in my opinion, there is no difference between accusing somebody of having a sex cult, a sex cult, which is a situation of multiple rapes. You understand? I don't think there's any difference between that and accusing somebody of being a mass murderer. I don't think there's much of a difference between making an accusation of that level and using rhetoric of this seriousness. Do you understand? And as somebody who actually, you know, as you know, I've been talking about this a, a little bit more on stream lately, but as somebody who greatly appreciates a uh, 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 non-standard relationship structures, whether it's polyamory, being fucking gay, or having a BDSM dynamic, and I'll, I'm a big fan of those things, it makes me very frustrated uh, to see uh, all of those types of things be caught in the blast of an unhinged YouTuber's uh, uh, rant against another YouTuber. This is the same as Kiwi Farms? I agree. And actually, funnily enough, this type of behavior probably has more of a direct impact than Kiwi Farms simply because of the number of people involved. I think, and this is me personally speaking here, you should not have a sex cult. Here's another thing. Speaking to his server, Xander Hall Pig Puncher has a sex cult. This is an insist, this is a declarative statement. Here we go. I'm sorry if you got mad at me or I hurt you today. I'm just so sick of this. Finding it harder and harder to stay polite. I echo this sentiment. Sometimes I fire from the hip, especially when I'm worked up emotionally. It's hard to know when to stand firm and when to stand back. Guys, 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 I was, it was, it was, it was them. They provoked me into lying about them. They provoked me into being an unhinged asshole on the internet. They provoked me into, uh, into accusing somebody without evidence of a, of a fucking horrible action. Except Zan, who I want to be clear, I am not apologizing to. Hey, bruh. Fuck you. 
Thought Slime? Fuck you, bro. Straight up. I don't really care what you think about any other person on this space or any other faction in this space. This shit is fucking trash. And this is still the old stuff. Just, just putting that message out there. Let's keep going. Every tweet I make gets replied to by sad little hangers on to do the limpest burns about some beef weird chud streamers have with me. Do you think you'll convince me of your position if you just say it more, lol? Me, whoa, I love carrot cake. Some stranger I've never spoken to. Almost, almost as much as you love saying Xander Hall had a sex cult. Dude. So this is the new stuff, by the way. Yeah, this is this is the present day, okay? Did he? This is the first time I'm hearing about it. No, I made a flip remark, clarified that I'd overstated it, and for years have dealt with his fans being insufferable about it. So here he is saying, making making the joke again, reasserting it, and then only when directly confronted does he back down. And notice the difference in inter in engagement here. You have a tweet here that has 231 likes, 206 likes on it. A lot of people see in this tweet. 12 people see this reply to a single user. You know, it's funny. Here on the Demon Mama channel, we've spent a lot of time uh, talking about the weird ways that social media works and the weird ways that you can manipulate social media to present a, uh, a very misleading narrative, right? We spend a lot of time talking about that. We talk about the way Twitter works. We talk about the way algorithms work. We talk about the way that YouTube TOS works, Twitch TOS works. We talk about all these different things. Right here, what you are witnessing is one of the ways that you can manipulate a narrative on social media. This is somebody who knows what gets seen. They make a joke, a plausibly deniable joke about a thing that was a verified lie and then, if they ever are confronted about it, well, they can wheel down. But guess what? A thousand people, 200 people, 400 people saw the main thread, and only 17 people see the response. Do you see how this works? It's a pattern that you can observe. A pattern that Thought Slime is taking advantage of to continue spreading misinformation about Xander Hall. Why? Who fucking knows? Because apparently, uh, uh, Thought Slime thinks Xander Hall is worthy of some kind of uh, a total, total internet, total war where you can just lie and say anything and accuse people of, uh, of, of multiple rape and then just go, ha I was just kidding when I did that. I was just kidding when I did that and told t thousands of people and said it explicitly. That was just a joke, but only everyone confronted and lots of other people see that and might trust this particular person who they might have reason to trust from other videos. And they see that and they go, wow, this must be something credible. Kind of fucked. And it leads to making people like Xander Hall have to, to divulge embarrassing parts of their life just to have peace from a false accusation. Oh, come on. It's not the game Total War. You, it's the term Total War. Total War is when you fucking say all the gloves are off. Anybody that gets in your way dies. It's a, it's a fight for survival. And some people are willing to declare total war just to save their own fucking ego. And one of those people is that dastardly little muffin thought slime. Maybe you should just apologize for spreading false rumors. Thought slime really falsely accused Zan of being a sexual abuser only to later say, but did you consider I had to deal with his fans asking me to apologize? Lamau. Wow, I would hate to be in their position. Thankfully, I have never once been wrong on the internet, Lamel. <laughs> yes, I spread a lie about someone being a sexual abuser, but have you thought about how this affects me? Me? True! By the way, I know who made this image. Do you know? Are you prepared? Do you know who made this image? I'll give you all one second. It's a little micro-celebrity on this corner of the internet. Yeah. Yeah. All the oh, everybody's got it. It was fucking Constance. Constance made the thought slime groiper in the past for a completely unrelated beef, and it has come back around unattributed. But I know, I know who made the groiper. 
Constance is basically left the left internet's Loki, okay? I want you to understand that. And if you also, like, it's, and you know what? It's really cool because it's like, uh, you know, like how in, in real, like, uh, in real Nordic myth, like, worshipping Loki is like, what the fuck? How the fuck do you worship Loki? You, like, play a prank on your grandma or something? Same way for how you worship Constance. The only way to worship Loki of the left is to just meme really hard. That's it. Yeah. Every single account on Twitter is just Constance trolling the fuck out of you. It's funny. That's actually... Listen, Constance is like the gray fox, okay? Anybody who wears the mask could become Constance at any moment. And any person could peel off their face and be Constance underneath. You just never know. Constance is like the thing. Oh, now it's getting scary, everybody. Wait. Wait. Is Constance in the room right now? Yes. It turns out Constance's handiwork is in the room right now. This is referencing, by the way, to right here. This is referencing Thought Slime. The motherfucker said, when I was abusive to somebody and there were consequences, that was, like, really hard for me. So here we go. Here's this previously uh, cited engagement. Uh, made a flip remark. Merrick. Wow. Damn. Weird. It's almost like the people who are coming out to talk about this and this, re this like, being re-upped are all the people who've also suffered a fuckload of uh completely out of step uh harassment and and uh and and, uh, and and lies being made up about them on the internet it's almost like people like merrick know what they're fucking talking about when they see some fucking abusive uh micro fandom going absolutely ham and spreading the worst allegations you possibly can by taking advantage of people's general desire uh to make the world a better place This isn't something it's okay to make a flippant remark about. It's a really serious thing to accuse someone of being a sexual predator, and you know it's serious. The right thing to do would be to apologize, correct the misinfo once and for all to your fan base, and work to make amends. Do you want to build a better, kinder world and lead by example to your large fan base? Because I believe that you do. Unlike a lot of left Twitter, our corner isn't filled with holier-than-thou purity testers for whom no forgiveness is the status quo. We just want you to do the right thing. Wait, you literally said it wasn't an offhand remark and you weren't being glib? Also, it is not... Now, here's Thought Slime responding here. It is not hyperbole to say that having a group of women who are sexually devoted to you while you are not to them and starting plans to live in a shared space is a sex cult. That is not me being glib. That's calling a spade a spade. So what we see here... Yeah, I know this is a, a, a screenshot and a screenshot. I'm rereading this so you know what's going on here. Literally, Thought Slime just straight flat lied multiple times and now just goes, nah, I was joking. Even though he said at the time, I'm not joking about this allegation. Just what the fuck? And here are some other responses that we've seen from other content creators who are talking about this. Merrick was being so charitable in the replies before this came up and he stopped responding, which is seemingly Thought Slime's strategy when somebody catches him misrepresenting what happened. Like, this clearly isn't going away, dude. And meanwhile, you're implying to all your followers that this is acceptable behavior and got right back to it with pedo jacketing Vosh recently. Hunter Avalon said, Wow, damn, everyone's talking about Xander Hall's sex cult. No one's talking about how to join. And then White Nervosa jokes, You don't join it. It joins you. Which I think that's cool, personally. I'm a big fan of that type of structure. You know, the infectious, you know, you know, I shoot a seed and then it's like, you know, there's, shut the fuck up. Never mind. Monster fuckers, you get it. Plant fuckers, you get it. Mushroom fuckers, you get it. Anyway, the truth, the truth. Here's, this is Lonnie, by the way. This is, uh, this is Lonnie joking. The truth, Zan is in a sex cult, but it's my sex cult. It's always been my sex cult. Based! Based Lonnie! Based Lonnie fucking sex cult. I'm here for it. Yes. 
And you made the joke before I did publicly. I made the joke literally the moment I heard the sex cult trauma was coming back. I literally shouted. I slammed my hand down. And I said, why the fuck does nobody ever talk about my sex cult? I put all this work into it and fucking nobody does it. They always fucking Zan and his steel and valor. Yeah. But you said it. So it's, it's you. You made the joke first. I was just cribbing you. So, you know, cancel Lonnie about the sex cult. Okay. <laughs> cancel Lonnie about the sex cult, everybody. Is Xander Hall's sex cult a co-op? A lot of people aren't going to get this particular one, but this is a reference to an ongoing meme about right-wingers asking left-wingers uh, whether they run their business as a co-op, as a gotcha, to whether they, like, live their values. But they ask it, like, for things where it doesn't apply. Like, they're like, are you, are you, is your YouTube channel a co-op? And it's like, wait, like, you know, YouTube channels are contract work, right? Like, it's really fucking hard. You have to hit a huge level before you can actually make, like, an official co-op with YouTube. It's basically, you have to make, like, a channel network. That's crazy. Anyway, stupid. But that's what the joke is, for those of you who don't know. This this meme that the right-wingers always bring up about, oh, are you, you got a co-op? Is your, is your, if your channel isn't a co-op, you must be a hypocrite. Anyway. Xander, Zan says, oh, wow, this has been pretty wild to wake up to. Should I talk about everyone dunking on Thought Slime for accusing me of having a sex cult today? The answer was yes. Vosh says, it seems like it's always the people most concerned with toxicity on the left who are the most toxic, abusive, and dishonest themselves. Not entirely true. It is the people who are the most vocal and self-centering uh, uh, while talking about toxicity on the left. They're like, I have come. Oh, it's like, you know what it is? It's that fucking clip of Michael Bloomberg as Mary Poppins, you know, where he's like, I'll make sure everyone behaves. When Mildred comes in and is like, I'll make you all behave. That's a big red flag that that person is absolutely going to be the most toxic person in the room. Okay. Straight up. The people who are the most loudest about their, 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 uh, virtue who are like, I am so good. And they always try to downplay it. Like, no, you forced me. You forced me to lie about you, which we've seen over and over and over again. Fucking Mildred pulling out here. Yeah, it's like it, it, but they don't though. They act like the left's babysitters, but they don't actually engage with anybody. They don't know anybody. They don't try to resolve any problems. They just bitch on Twitter. Again, the long whine. Whee! 10 years or whatever. I don't know how fucking long. How many years has this channel existed? There you go. Whee! Regarding this Thought Slime drama, I found a clip from a guy who makes good YouTube videos who has some profound advice that Thought Slime should probably take. And now we're going to watch this, which is a clip of Thought Slime being directed back at Thought Slime. So let's see if the mirror, let's see if the mirror befits Thought Slime's position. A few people took issue with it and they let me know, gently, that what I had done was hurtful and beneath me. And I did what YouTubers are supposed to do in that situation. I followed protocol. I got really defensive, like a baby, a baby that had both pooped and peed itself, that kind of baby, insulted everyone who spoke up and threw a temper tantrum. I was about halfway through writing an op-ed for Reason.com titled, Why I'm Leaving the Left, The Hounding of SJW Woke Scolds, when I thought, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask my fiance what she thinks and she'll tell me I'm right because I'm always right and the only feedback I should be allowed to get is constant praise. So she watched it and she said to me, well, Matt, you know, one problem with this video is that you did fuck up and one thing about the criticism you're getting is that they <laughs> kind of have a point. And suddenly, the cognitive dissonance was broken. And it became obvious to me, like it had been obvious to everyone else before me, that I was doing that thing, you know, that thing where, where you know you're wrong, so you try and just be wrong harder at the people trying to talk sense to you. To yeah, you mean like all of the other people who've told you that you rebooting the sex cult allegations a fucking year afterwards is one of the stupidest things you could have possibly done? That you already got creamed the first round, you already got exposed as a fucking idiot who talks too much and thinks too little the first time around, but you went out of your own way to boot up a drama that hurt somebody else a lot and also made you look like an idiot? You did that yourself. You went like out of your way. This is like, you know what this is like? This is like when like uh, uh, you see one of those videos online of like somebody's dog like uh, uh, like uh, hitting the shit out of like a porcupine 
and the porcupine keeps trying to walk away and the dog is like rawr, 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 and keeps pestering the porcupine and the porcupine's like dude stop dude fucking stop and then the porcupine puts its paws up like this and it's like hey 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 and the dog keeps going and the dog keeps going and then the porcupine's like fine whap and then the spikes are in the dog's nose and the dog is like Wah! you know you that's what this is that's what this whole thing is that's what it is it's a person dr just fucking driving themselves into their own fucking into a wall of their own making and hurting other people for no reason other than a maybe preach to the choir maybe to i don't know i just don't think it's going to pay off this time but also i think it's fucking shitty and hurtful and annoying and embarrassing Double down and double down until you're comfortably beneath the Earth's crust and nobody can force you back up to the surface to confront the painful reality that you've hurt people. So I... Yeah, Tim, Tim Cooney from YouTube chat says, this is like poetry. It rhymes. Which is also like history, which is a farce, and then it rhymes, and then it becomes history, which repeats itself, sometimes in the span of a week and sometimes in the span of a day. And there are days that feel like months and months that feel like seconds. I think I've got the quote down now. I think I finally memorized the quote. Swallowed my pride and I said I was sorry. I took down the video, reached out to a few of the people I'd been particularly shitty oh, to. Oh, shit. I forgot poetry is a flat circle. God damn it. And apologized to them personally. It hurt to do. It was hard. I don't tell you that to make you feel sorry for me. It should be hard. Growth is hard. And this is my job. People pay me thousands of dollars a month, and that means it doesn't always get to be easy. I'm not- Time isn't real. It's all made up. Join us in the clock abolition gang. Fuck clocks. We don't need them. You can have pseudo clocks, which is like, you know, a YouTube play bar, because it shows you how long it is. That can be used. But no clocks, no big cr clocks allowed. Only ornate grandfather clocks that you can't read, because they're just pretty. And they don't make you feel bad. Fuck clocks. Let's continue entitled to this being easy. I don't know exactly what creators owe an audience, but I know the answer isn't nothing. That's a shitty attitude to have, I think. I owe plenty to my audience. I owe you honesty. If I'm going to ask... Yeah, you do owe your, you do owe your audience honesty, bro. You do. You do, dude. If you to listen to what I say each week, the very least I can do to earn that privilege is to mean what I say. I yeah, dude, which is it? Did you lie or were you joking? Well, we know the answer, but why do you keep saying that you did the opposite? Hmm. I owe you integrity. While nobody can be perfect, I owe it to people who have invested a little bit of their emotions in me over time to respect that and honor that. I'm not always a good person. Nobody's always a good person. But I think it's fair to say that I damn well ought to try. We all ought to try. True, you should try, and you should try a lot harder, Thought Slime, because right now you're not trying very hard. In fact, it almost seems like you're trying to do the dead opposite. When I fail, and I sometimes will because I'm human, that means I have to make amends. I have to admit fault and face the consequences of my actions. True, you should make amends, admit fault, and face the consequences of your actions. You should do that by apologizing unequivocally and making it right to Xander Hall. Because there's a lot of people who've now seen this. It's a year away and you're still doing this shit. Actions. So, you know, it's just kind of funny. Honestly, big shout out to Gayfesh real quick. Huge shout out to Gayfesh for posting these words right back at Thought Slime. I gotta say, I'm gonna give this a retweet. Because damn, damn, is that not a fucking bullseye right there. The mirror, the mirror treatment. How painful. The infernal mirror has been has been revealed. Ah, as you stare into it and see your own sins reflected back at you. Anyway, here we go. Big word. We got the amazing atheist with the crying emoji. I wish I had a sex cult. And then Lonnie says, join mine. Wow, damn. damn. Wow, that's some heavy recruitment. Fuck, damn, Lonnie. You're going hard, evangelizing hard. What the hell? Like, look at this. Okay, here's another thing. All right. Am I going to have to do another call out here? Sophie posting says, I love saying that Xanderhal had a sex cult far more than I love carrot cake. 
And I love carrot cake a lot. You know, there's only one last little plausible deniability that I can think of. Okay? There's only one more, like, bit of pro plausible deniability, which is that, oh, this is a joke. We're joking. You know, kind of like the, have you all ever seen the joke where um, it, 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 was a, it was at a roast of Bob Saget? Okay? At a roast of Bob, Bob Saget, um, Gilbert Gottfried uh, went up on the stage and he was praising Bob Saget. And, uh, and then he goes, you know what? I don't care what anybody says. I don't care how many times people accuse Bob Saget of raping a woman behind an Arby's in 1990. I don't think he did that. I don't think he raped a woman behind an Arby's in 1990. I just don't think it happened. And anyone who says that he raped a woman behind an Arby's in 1990 is simply lying. And so it was a big joke. And the idea is that you get people to hear the part, the big part, and nothing else. So even though you're saying that he hey, didn't hey, do it. Mama, I was in the bathroom and you were misquoting him again. What I do? What I say? What I say? Is it 1996? Is it Arby's? Is it Wendy's? No, what is it? What did I get wrong? It's, it's very simple. Oh, come on. F correct it. Correct the quote. There's no evidence that he raped and killed a girl in 1990. And if you have any evidence, stop doing whatever you're doing and go to the police. Yeah, okay. There's there's the much better quote with the Gilbert Godfrey voice that Fawn can do quite well. It is a good Godfrey voice. I know. <laughs> I, wait, I thought it was an Arby's, wasn't it? No. What was it? Nothing. He just... No, I swear to God. Whatever. Said. Anyway, point is, yes, now you understand what I'm saying. Uh, it reminds me of that, except the context of that entire bit was in a roast. This is not in a roast. This is just saying these things about people on the internet when you're known for being a relatively reliable, social justice-focused YouTuber. It's not a roast. It's not funny. It's not a joke. You're not saying it in the context of a joke. So, so, what is it then? What is the even remaining plausible deniability that any of these people have? Or are they just sort of openly admitting that they're spreading a lie, a harmful lie about somebody they don't like? Because to me, it seems like they're being pretty open about that. I think that's pretty fucking shitty. I think that's shitty of, of, of Sophie posting. I think that's fucking shitty of Mildred. The fact of the matter is, Thought Slime, holy fucking shit. Get your shit together and fucking make an apology. This is fucking bullshit, dude. Like, this is blatantly bullshit. It's not a fucking team, team sports thing. You were just a giant lying asshole. And you should own up to it because every single day that you don't is harming your credibility with more and more people. I don't believe you for shit. I, I Listen, I do think your style is whiny, okay? I know I'm sort of writing this like an open letter right now, re saying this like an open letter. I think your style is a little whiny, but I've watched a lot of your videos. And when I first started streaming, I thought you were a relatively respectable figure. But I don't think this is respectable. I think this is fucking disrespectable. I think it's fucking trash behavior, personally. So fucking stop it. Just fucking stop. You keep acting like other people are doing it to you. You're the one who kicked this drama back up. You brought it back around. You started it in the first place. It's fucking weird, and we can all see that you're the cry bully here. So stop before everybody stops fucking associating with you because you're alienating tons and tons of people look at how he's hemorrhaging followers is this for real this is what i was just talking about not that i really care hemorrhage all the followers you want at the end of the day just stop fucking hurting people i care about holy shit wait oh jesus 
Holy shit, you're not kidding. Oof. Oof. Last 30 days, down eight, almost 800 followers. Holy shit, dude. Plus, added 376 tweets, lost 800 followers. Only gained 15 new followers. Ooh, that's bad. Oof. Yikers. Oh, that's 15 people he followed. Oh, sorry. Wrong number on the 15. Regardless, the loss total is 800, which is a lot. I think we can safely move on to that. Uh, takeaway, final takeaway for the whole little drama segment. Uh, thought Slime, stop being such a piece of shit. I won't even pretend for your own good. Just stop. It's embarrassing. You're not accomplishing anything. You're tanking your own followers. And fuck you. So there you go. Uh, yeah. I think, like I said, open and shut, right? Th Thought Slime lied the fuck about everything. Xander Hall has been, uh, uh, has been, uh, uh, what's the word? What's the word I'm thinking of? No, no. What's the word when you're, uh, um, released of your, of like, when you're like cleared of your crimes? exonerated thank you it was the trump one but i have like a trump based erase spot in my brain so anything that's even loosely associated my brain is deleting at the moment uh exonerated yes xander hall has been exonerated of the uh the false allegations levied against him and uh yeah i just figured i would let all my followers uh see all of the development from the beginning to the end so that they don't have to feel like, uh, uh, like they don't know what's going on. You know, I really fucking hate all the lying that people do on the internet. I really fucking hate it. You know, it's not even the like accidentally being wrong stuff that really gets to me. People are wrong all the time. It's when people go this far fucking out of left field to lie for what? To like bully Xander Hall? You really don't have anything better to do? And remember, these are the people who also at the time got mad at Xander Hall for defending himself because he could have talked about other things. Because why don't you have something better to do than defend yourself from these allegations we made up about you? Come on. It's fucking stupid. It's fucking bad. And that's that. That's it. That's the thought slime drama.